Hello everyone, my name is Noah, and welcome to the Stet Studio. So today we are going to be doing our very last, final bullet journal setup for December 2022. This is, as it has been every month, an Archer and Olive plant-based bride collaboration notebook. Um, there aren't any more of this type in stock, but there are lots of other great notebooks on their website. Not sponsored, just a fan. You can see the notebook has taken a little bit of wear this year. There's a bit like dark smudges, lighter smudges, which I think are paint. Some there too. There's cat hair everywhere. You can see perhaps how it has been, you know, stuffed out, but it's really, really survived very well over this year. And that's one thing that I really like about it. It is 160 pages and the weight of the paper is 160 GSM. I did order another Archer and Olive notebook. I actually ordered a couple. That'll be in a future video. So if you're interested in seeing that and me talking about what my plans are for that this coming year, be sure to subscribe, stick around and all that. So if you don't know, every month this year, the theme has had something to do with nature that can be found in the state I live in, which is Pennsylvania. So if we open this up, we're gonna move some of these little guys back. There we go. If we open this up, you can see my cover page for 2022, which says, the trail leads not merely north and south, but up to the body, mind, and soul of man, which was a quote attributed to Harold Allen, early Appalachian trail planner and volunteer. So the secondary or overall theme for this bullet journal was that anything that didn't directly have to do with a month itself, so a more general collection or something, would be Appalachian Trail themed since I live in the part of the United States called Appalachia and the Appalachian Trail runs through Pennsylvania. And I'm not going to go too deep into all of this despite how sentimental I'm feeling right now, but I will talk about this. I'm going to do a full flip through video later in the year once December gets closer to being done, but I will show you everything and talk about it. But suffice it to say, if you're interested in any of the other themes that I've done in this journal this year, feel free. There's a whole playlist you can watch. Um, I've done a lot of great ones. So this is the January spread and I just want to show you this because I'm going to kind of go back to the aesthetic, the vibe of this month. Let's see if I can find a page that I can show you without having to blur too much. Okay, this is actually the first week of January, week one, and I want you to see the way the illustrations look this week. This is the vibe I'm kind of going for this month in December. I want to come back to this initial look. I don't think I'm going to include any paper. I might, we'll see, but I really want the cross hatching, the small details, that sort of thing. I've kind of gotten away from this a little bit as the year's gone on. It's not a big deal. I really wanted to just let it go where it took me. But like I said, I want to kind of circle back to this look in the final month. So you may be able to guess what the theme for our final month is if you look at the background of this setup and all of that. It is pine cones. So I'm going to flip to that. As always, I have everything sketched out already, and I'm really excited to get started. And I'm gonna bring you down closer to me and switch over to voiceover, Noah. So for the cover, I add in, as per usual, the name of the month in my big, somewhat fancy cursive. It is pretty close to my usual handwriting, but I do kind of like to be a little more grandiose and a little more flowy with it. It's not all that practical, but it works. For the quote, I decided to go with pine trees with low limbs spread over fresh snow made a stronger vault for the spirit than pews and pulpits ever could. Daniel Woodrell. And I wrote that in printed rather than in cursive and I did spread it out so that every row is a little bit further apart just so that it takes up a little more space and kind of makes it look more full. And I do think that I forgot Mr. Woodrell's um, name. I'll go back in and add that later, but looking at it, I think I did. If 
For the cover, I decided to draw in the white pine, which I decided to label before adding in any of the details. It is also known as the Pinus strobus, which is its scientific name. For details, I wanted to add in the shadows with cross-hatching just because looking at the reference images, the shadows were very stark, so I felt like I needed to add them in using the cross-hatching and really make sure that they were present so that you could see that the scales of the pine cone really were sticking out away from the core. You can find them below in the Pinterest board that will be linked in the description. And yeah, I felt like a lot of this process kind of took a while, but it was a really nice reminder to just kind of slow down and, you know, take my time with my art. This wasn't something that I wanted to rush through, it was something that I wanted to enjoy. And I also added in a few dots here and there just to add some more texture. For my weeklies, I am doing my super condensed rolling weeklies based on the plant-based brides rolling weeklies, which you can find on her channel. I am condensing everything because I ran out of pages. Normally I would have a two page spread for each week and I would have a whole monthly calendar and a few other spreads per month, which you can see in some of my earlier spreads, but I'm condensing each week to one page, both with the little weekly sort of calendar and the task list. Again, upon this recording of the voiceover, I'm realizing that I didn't add in the words task list, but I'll add that in later. So for the first two weeks, I'm drawing just one pine cone, which you can see me doing here. This one's more of a squat pine cone with longer scales compared to the white pine. And this was kind of fun for me. I had to really focus on the individual pine cones and look at them and their shapes and see how they're different because a lot of times it can kind of be, well, it's a pine cone. They're all the same, you know, which isn't true. So then on this one, the shading was more noticeable along the core. Although there was some shading, which you will see me adding later along the individual scales, but it was definitely more focused along the core where everything came together. And I used the same cross hatching technique here along with my autographic liners. If I didn't mention that before, that's what they are. I've used them all year long. I love them. They're my favorite pen for inking and I really am very happy with how this turned out. Like I said, it was a bit of a slog, but it was it was a well needed slog. I guess it wasn't a slog, it was a hike. It was a journey and I needed to go on it and take my time and not try to rush through it because rushing through it would just make me unhappy with the results. And I've spent a lot of time lately rushing, trying to get everything done. So the name of this pine cone here is Red Pine, which is a Pinus resinosa. And yeah, like I said, I've been doing a lot of rushing lately. Um, I'm actually recording this voiceover while I'm traveling. I'm in my childhood bedroom. I think I'm going to record a little bit of all of this to show y'all um, in the November vlog, but I'm not sure. So it was nice to be able to take the time to do this more slowly, even though I did it before I started traveling. So this is the next one, and this one was actually the hardest one to draw. It is a table mountain pine or a Pinus pungens, and it really was very tricky. Um, it doesn't help that the scales of the pine cone kind of, the first half will go up and the second half will go down sort of, so to speak, the half closest to the top will move towards the top and the half closest to the bottom will point towards the bottom. And it really made it kind of hard to draw, but I did eventually come up with a technique I was happy with. So then I added in more of the shading, just like I did with all of the other ones. The only difference with this one was, well, actually there were two differences. First off, there are a lot more little nooks and crannies to get into. And the second difference was the fact that the part of the scale that is shaded changes halfway through because the scales change direction that they're pointing. And that really just, you know, the shadow is in the same area, but it changes where on the scale it is.
So here's the flip through. I really am quite happy with how it turned out. It's a simple set of spreads for this month, but I really do think that they look nice. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I would love if you would check out all of the spreads from this year, or if you would perhaps subscribe to see the journals that I've picked out for next year, as well as the final flip through of this journal for this year. I hope you've enjoyed this process this year, and you'll have to let me know if you'd like me to do it again sometime. Bye!